Hey kids, welcome to another episode of Stylish Rumble Harmony Tutorial Rigging Guide. Harmony Rig, Rig Guide. Today's episode is going to be kind of a Q&A sort of a thing. I've had enough questions that are sort of in the same vicinity that I feel like I could fill episode with it. So we're going to talk a little bit about the displays and how those work and being a little bit more organized, how you can do selections more efficiently, junk like that. So the first question is, how do you set up your interface when you're working? Because some people like to separate the node view onto their second monitor, have different ways of setting it up while they're working. But this is exactly what my setup looks like when I'm working. If I'm rigging, it looks like this. So I have a big network. I've got all my node library available, my coordinates control points up at the top. And then I've got my library down here if I need to grab any stuff. If I'm animating, it looks more like that. <laughs> So I have more camera and less network, but I still like to have the network right here because that's sort of where my hand rests. And if I'm selecting things in a complex way, I like to do that through the network. So if I needed to move those both these eyes, for example, if I hit the pupil and hit B to go up the chain, now I have the whole bits peg. And in here you can see I'm selecting on the, the peg that is actually controlling all of these. But then I can't also select it for the other eye. A lot of people will hold shift and then select all the pieces independently. But now in my network it's actually selecting these three for this eye. Color art, pupil, and highlight. And then over here on this other eye they'll select the eye bits because they did that using like stepping up their thing. But now if I go down here and I put some, some different animation on it, sometimes I was using the eye bits and sometimes I was using the individual bits. So now the animation is spread out over two places and you're going to get some weird stuff happening. See that pop? That's because the eye bits, the highlight here, all these little sub pegs that you would use ideally for something like scaling like this, those have keys on them that are stop motion. And then the overall, the eye bits peg has motion tweens on it. So the eyes end up exploding and the animator doesn't know because they're not being totally clear on what they're actually selecting. So for me, I find it's much easier to work in the network. So here's my head. I'm doing facial animation. I can select the eye bits from this one. I can select the eye bits from that one, just holding my control key. And now I'm moving both of them at the same time, but I'm definitely putting the animation on the peg that I want. And that's important if you're animating to cut down on the frustration later. All of this complexity adds a lot of useful abilities like being able to scale this completely independently from the motion of the eye bits themselves, but it, it can also cause a lot of confusion at the same time. So long story short, I like to keep my network over here so I can uh, keep track of all of those things. Oh, I've been asked how you make these color mats and that's pretty simple. You go up here to your little hamburger, I think they call that, hit insert and go down to backdrop. Because I had a selection, it created a backdrop around that selection. If you want to select, say, the entire group this head, I can click on the top part of this and then move the entire head around. But if I want to move the mat itself, I have to touch that this handle down here, and then I can move it out from underneath this thing here. So this is to move the whole thing, and the little triangle guy you can grab him and then move this out from under stuff and you've got your options box you can ch choose from one of these hideously saturated colors over here that makes it hard to see the very saturated peg sometimes and you can name it whatever you want and you can even write some little notes in here that says hey animators don't touch this you're breaking everything why do you make me cry at night you know important stuff like that you can also change colors on the timeline. So here, if I'm doing lip sync, say, I've already changed the color because I recorded this twice and <laughs> forgot. Uh, my, I changed my microphone over yesterday to do some other stuff and I forgot to set my microphone today and then I recorded it and it was terrible. So this is take three. But anyway, you can change the color too. Um, <laughs> double click here. And that'll give you your layer properties. And of course, you can also go to your mouth here and open the layer properties there. And you can get the same thing. And this little box up here will give you the option to change the color on your timeline. Hooray! Because, I mean, you can center on selection using the O key. So that's the eye there. And then you go to the mouth there. But 
even so, if you've got all this other stuff here, it's nice to have something just be like, blah, I'm the one you're looking for, because you don't want to use your brain. That's, that's a, don't, don't even use it. Just leave it home. Another thing you can do to kind of simplify the selection process is add specific displays. So here I have just the head on a display and head R is up here. And this is the camera display. So I can change that to legs. I'm going to show you the butt that we're going to rig next. And you can see I've got some cool little circles in there. And I can talk about why I've got those going on. And then I can go back to the head that ooh, is exploding on this frame now because I was showing you how not to set keys. Woo. Display. So you can just add as many of these as you need. And you can have a bunch of different stuff set up on one thing. So if you have a lot of characters in the scene, say you've got two main characters that are talking, and then you've got other characters just sitting around in the coffee shop just populating the scene, you can set two of your main characters on one display and then it's not going to show any of the additional characters or try and render it in the camera view while you're working and it'll really speed up your scene. And then once you switch back to doing the extra characters, you can put as many of those as you want on another display and only work on those at one time. So that's really convenient, these little displays. And also if you have your advanced display, so edit preference, advanced, advanced display, it's the second one in the list. If this is checked, then you also have the option of separating things on your timeline using those displays as well. So now it's only showing the legs down here and it's only showing the head up here. And it's important to know that these are independent if you have that checked, because if you're like, oh, I'm gonna just work on my mouse chart and you're pressing O and it's not centering on selection and you're scrolling down, you can't find, oh my God, where did it go? No, it's because this is separate now and you can, display all which is usually how I have my timeline in case I need to grab something else but if I'm working on say three or four layers of effects and I don't want to like try and hand, like deal with this network at all I can just set it to whatever specific thing I'm working on and I can still use the display up here to see the characters if I need to animate to match those like if they're splashing around a pond without having to deal with those down here. So that's a nice way of separating things. You can also, if you've got your eye bits and your eye bits over here, and you want to only see those in the timeline, you can right click in your camera view and hit tag. Boop. And now down here, I'm gonna click on this dealy little hamburger guy, view, and then view tagged layers. Boop. And now that's only showing me the eye bits that I have selected so I can work on just these dudes here. Pendently, well, that's some Steve Buscemi stuff happening. Oh my God. Um, but I can just work on these separately, do whatever I need to do, and then go back to the view and then normal view mode, and it'll go back to whatever I have selected here for the display. So that's a super useful thing that not many people actually bother to use. So there's plenty of ways to take advantage of this, bear things down a little more. So you're not, if you're dealing with super complex scenes, you aren't just being bombarded by lots of information. Another thing I feel like I should bring up is just being aware that if you right click in different windows, you're going to get different menus. So over here, if I right click, I'm going to get this. It's paste special, paste, all that kind of jazz group. If I click over here and right click, I get a different menu. Tag, untag is there, paste layer object, paste special, that kind of stuff. And right now I have the transform tool, but if I, I switch to the select tool and I right click, I'm getting another menu. So this right click menu is specific to the drawing tool in the camera view. And then if I click over here, I'm getting the network right click. And if I click up here, I'm getting a different right click. So baby animators are often, they just can't find the thing. So they'll figure out the tag thing. They're like, okay, someone just showed me how to do the tag thing. I want to tag this and they'll right click and there's no tag option. They're like, they just showed me and it doesn't exist. And I know it does, but why is it gone? And it's because the right click is a little bit diva. Like it's just a diva program. Why Harmony? And of course it's super useful because now I don't have an option box that's 15 miles wide because it's encompassing every possible right click scenario that could ever happen. But it is important to, to be aware 
of what tool you're using and what window you're in in when when you're right clicking so the tagging thing is only when you have an animation tool selected you can tag if you have the drawing tool selected like the select tool then you're not going to be able to tag that there's also if you are using the drawing tools there are some more specific ways to select in there and so for example if i need just this outline i can select that color i can right click using the drawing tool right click and select strokes with the current color or control shift a and that's going to give me just that outline and right now uh, my drawing is set back so i can go to my view show current drawing on top and now that's going to pop that drawing to the front select strokes by current color and if i needed to select everything except the outline maybe i need to put it on the color layer instead of trying to select this and then this and maybe there's some other bits in here that i might miss like see there's something behind there that i couldn't get so instead of doing that what i'm going to do is select the outline again select strokes with current color and now i'm going to right click again and then invert the selection using Control shift i and now it's going to select everything except the outline so rather than trying to tediously pick out all these pieces i can select the easier thing and then invert the selection oh one more thing i'm going to point out is just that the groups the input for the group is called a multi-port in and then the out the pooping one is the multi-port out because occasionally a group will get it deleted somehow and you'll need to find a new one so you can just go in your node library and grab a multi-port in and then plug your thing back in and it's also good to know that you can have multiple things plugged into this and they will all come out the top in the same order oftentimes if i'm doing effects say her nose needs sparkles because everything sparkles on a princess show and this has been the head is grouped and then I go inside and it's one of those sh riggers who likes to group everything. So this is grouped over here and this does group there and that's grouped because groups, groups are fun. Then I can just go into there and find the nose and it's coming out to the multi-port out as the first option. So then I can grab that from here, this group, pop that out of the multi-port out on the far left, and then I can plug this into my effects. So this has kind of gotten really messy because like I said, I've recorded this three times because I am a failure of a human, but hopefully this is a little more organized. I don't like to group things a lot. I'll have each character grouped if I'm designing a show, but my rig will look more like this where everything's just available. Because as I mentioned earlier, I like to select from the network and I think it's much more efficient than dealing with something that's groups, just lots and lots of subfolders and i mean this could be in like tons and tons of stuff in here and is separated by like a million miles but i still feel like it's it's more wieldy this way so that's sort of a shotgun overview of just navigating the space a little better look at the displays each of these little hamburger menus is specific to the view that it's in this has all the camera ones this one down here has timeline options this one over here has network options or node view options and then each of these menus you can right click and you can get more options so of course the node view has the node view options which is this box here and if that's missing boop, you don't have those options that's how you would get it you right click on the box that you need to fix and then you grab the node view like that or whatever specific one you need and then you can take that and you can move it wherever you want Oop. there now it's on the side now it's on the top wherever you want the program's really malleable that way but like i said this is how I work exactly what you see. I'm not changing this just to do a video. You should know I'm lazy. And don't forget, there's also if you have your animation tool, you can right click, you can tag or untag things here. You can go down to your timeline. You can view the normal view or the tagged layers view. Selection only mode. You can even grab a bunch of junk like this. Ah, I need that stuff. Go down here to your view because you want to view the selection only and now it's going to show just the stuff you have select all these groups you can decide if you want to see those or not by right clicking show 
and then show sounds, effects, groups, composites, all that stuff. So you can even show your comps down there. Show or hide your functions if you have functions on the go. Show the manager, which tells you what you're managing to show. <laughs> Basically, whenever you're looking for something, just go to the, like, the nearest area. Like, okay, I have a timeline problem. Let's just right click in the different parts of the timeline. See how that's going. Getting to know your menus and being aware of what you're selecting on. If you're using a, a drawing tool versus an animation tool, just like I went over in the drawing episode, th they do different things and they also supply you with different options. So if you have any questions on this sort of just navigational idea and the different menus and stuff please ask away and i'll try and answer them as best i could hopefully this helps somebody to just find their way in this beast of a program because it's it's, it's a big one if you know anybody who can stand to learn a bit more about harmony please share like subscribe all those things internet people ask you to do and i will see you in the next video